What is going on, guys? In today's lesson, we're going to look at the question of how did Confederation impact Central Canada and the Maritimes? So Central Canada, meaning Ontario, Quebec, and the Maritimes, meaning those Atlantic colonies, PEI, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, all of those provinces. So even though Ontario, Quebec, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick had united to become called the Dominion of Canada in 1867, so we know this about Confederation, uh, the economy and culture of each province remained very different and unique. So considering what you know about the economy, geography, language, and religion of each region, do you think all these regions benefited from Confederation? No, they did not. They did not all benefit. So what Confederation allowed the federal government of Canada to do was to set their own national economic goals. New factories produced everything from shoes and textiles to glass and furniture. There was a great amount of growth of business and industry in Quebec and Ontario. Small villages became larger factory towns where people moved to work. Retail stores started to expand. There was the building, um, there was the uh, creation of the distillery district in Toronto and Toronto was shipping millions of gallons of products to Quebec, the Maritimes and the United States and even Brazil. And what a distillery is, is a place where liquor is made. So if you look at picture A, that is before Confederation. And if you look at photo B, that is 29 years after Confederation. What are the major differences between these two paintings? Both of them are Toronto, one's the distillery in Toronto, and the other one's before Confederation. So although there was a lot of prosperity in the economy in Ontario and Quebec, it was the opposite happening in the Maritimes. There's actually an economic collapse. And so what happened was right after Confederation, Nova, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, had access to the ocean. They imported tea, cotton, sugar, spices from southern United States, the Caribbean, and Asia, and they distributed to other parts of the country using the railway. This created jobs and built small towns and villages along the railway. But then what happened was John A. Macdonald was elected for the second time and developed his three goals on national policy. Macdonald only wanted Canada to use Canadian products. That's it. And he made provinces pay a large tax when they imported products from other countries. And the majority of the Maritimes economy was based on imports. So this really hurt them economically. Transportation of goods from other parts of Canada was very expensive. People left the Maritimes and headed for Western Canada, meaning Ontario, Quebec, and BC. What happened was that led to a drastic population decrease in the maritime. So what happened because of this uh, national policy is it created a lot of social conflicts. Ontario wanted to keep close ties with their British colony because, you know, most of these people that live in Ontario came from Britain and they were being loyal to the motherland, to England and Britain. And they wanted to adapt English and Protestantism as the official language and religion for the entire country. They didn't really care so much about the French language and the Catholic origin and the French identity. Whereas Quebec did not feel strong ties about Britain whatsoever. They wanted to protect the French language and that French identity and the Roman Catholic religion. So then what happened was there were these riots called the Jubilee riots and the Catholic Pope had declared the year of 1875 as a Jubilee or a celebration. To celebrate, Catholics organized marches and processions through the streets of Toronto and a Protestant organization called the Orange Order and the mayor of Toronto asked the Catholic Archbishop to cancel the celebrations. The Archbishop refused to cancel the events, but they promised that they would be peaceful. So at a parade on October 3rd, 1875, stones were thrown, pistols were fired, and a six hour fight followed. Uh, many of the rioters were members of the Orange Order, but the problem here was that the police were supposed to protect the Catholics but the majority of the police were also from the Orange Order. So they kind of just sat back and was like, have at them. And the <gasps> violence just kept ensuing. So then there was a second violent uh, affair called the Gibbard Affair. And on November 16th, 1875, 1,200 militiamen and soldiers attended the funeral of Joseph Gibbard in Montreal, so in Quebec. And this was the second attempt at burying his body. So who was Joseph Gibbard? 
He was a Catholic who belonged to a liberal group called the Institut Canadien de Montreal. Uh, when he died, people requested a Catholic funeral, but the request was denied because the Catholic Church believed that the Institut Canadien de Montreal challenged their authority. The Catholic Church declared that no members of that group would be given a Catholic burial. So ja Joseph Gibber died in 1869 and was buried in a Protestant cemetery temporarily, temporarily while his wife took this issue to court. So then in 1875, a judge ruled that Joseph Gibbard should be given a Catholic burial. And this angered Catholic church supporters because it suggested that the government had more authority than the church. And when his remains were being moved to a Catholic site on September 2nd, 1875, an angry Catholic mob stopped them. The second burial in November was successful, but the bishop declared that the burial site was not sacred or holy. After this, the Quebec government passed a law that stated that the Catholic church had sole authority to decide who could be buried in a Catholic cemetery. And this law still exists today. So what I want you to do, guys, is I want you to think about what's happened in this chapter. How did the population movement of that tax, the tax tariffs that were imposed on the Maritimes, uh, John A. Macdonald saying you cannot bring in goods from other countries, that created a movement, a decrease in the population of the Maritimes. So that national policy from McDonald, how did that national policy result in a vast decline in the Maritimes while other parts of Canada prospered? Or what I want you to think about is the historical significance of the Gibbard Affair. So how was the Gibbard Affair a sign that Quebec would be a distinct part of Canada that would remain independent in many ways? So that idea of French Catholic versus English Protestant and we still kind of see that today 